Hey everybody. So this is going to be a quicker video. Uh, I want to get back to more of the rapid fire type stuff that just has little bits of information in it. So this one we're going to talk about a way that I discovered a while back to handle uh, transitions between tricky pieces of geometry. Like sometimes it's just not practical to cut in the geo and all that, you know, you know nicely. And this is a good and cheap way to get around that, you know, depending on the circumstance. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so this is the kind of scenario that I'm talking about. You've got these two cylinders, pipes or whatever they happen to be, and they're, you know, they're running into each other, right? Uh, in the high poly mesh. And, you know, let's say this is all weird shapes out here and you've cut a bunch of stuff in here already. And even if you hadn't, uh, looking at this geometry, you're like, okay, my edges don't line up. They're different sizes. And getting these stitched together is going to be a major pain in the butt. So here's how I go about solving that. So the nice thing about this technique is that this is actually uh, not moto specific for once. Uh, this can be applied to any modeling program that has the ability to, to conform geometry to other geometry. And that's pretty much all modeling apps as far as I know. So the basic plan of attack here is I'll take this upper cylinder and paste it and paste it into a new mesh item and scale it down. This is the uh, uh, the top part of the skirt. The skirt comes in two sections, which you'll see here. So I drag this down to maybe here, just for just to get going. Grab this edge loop. Now, now I've grabbed the bottom loop. Now the key is I want to pull those verts down and have them conform to the background geometry. And in Moto, that's a mesh constraint. So I say I want to constrain to the background, half millimeter or half a centimeter, I should say, based on vector. And I pull these verts down and you can see them snapping into place against that background geometry. Okay, so we're done. Drop that tool. Now we need to create the bottom part of the skirt, which is very simple, uh, unless you hit the wrong key. So grab the bottom loop. Uh, we'll extend it out. I'll scale it to give it a bit of width and convert it to vertices again. Now I need to drag this second loop down so it does the same thing. So it sits on that background mesh. My constraints are all in place still. So pull this down until it conforms. And really, that's it. So if I turn off my wireframe and I back up, uh, that looks like it's stitched on purpose and you didn't have to cut in anything. Uh, the key is this piece of geometry that got built here. This geometry basically uh, uh, mirrors the upper cylinder you know, on the top part. The middle edge loop lays on the transition point and the second or the bottom edge loop just uh, moves out from there a little bit, which gives you a nice uh, transition piece. Uh, and that's it. Um, you can build your low poly now and bake it out and your normal map will look uh, just like you stitched that in. Uh, it's essentially the same thing as using floaters for detail, you know, except here you're using floaters for transitions. So that's it. I um, hope you found that useful.